Hi, this is Ed from gasbike.net. Today I'm going to show you how to install a two-stroke 66cc motor kit on this beach cruiser. Before I get started, I want to show you uh, what comes inside the kit from gasbike.net. This is the two-stroke 66cc motor, chrome exhaust, 415 chain and chain tensioner. This is your wide bracket uh, some hardware for the rear sprocket. This is the 44 tooth rear sprocket Carburetor gas tank fuel filter with pet cock You have your throttle assembly with cable also the coil clutch assembly with the cable chain guard spark plug removal tool and your pulling tool to go over the tools that you're going to need to complete the installation you're going to need a few different ratchets and wrenches, an Allen key, a chain breaker, Teflon for the gas tank, blue Loctite, some needle nose pliers, scissor, Phillips screwdriver and flathead, also some chain loop and a drill to drill a hole into your handlebar with. Okay, your first step is to install the rear sprocket. As you can see, we have all the needed hardware and parts. You're going to need a 15 millimeter wrench, screwdriver, and a needle nose pliers. So let's get started. First, you're going to remove the coaster brake arm. So now that the axle is exposed, you want to get your two rubber pieces and look at them. If one of them is a little thinner, you're going to want to use that one on the outside and the thicker one in between the spokes. So in this case, it looks like this is thinner. So we'll take the thicker one and use our scissors to cut a hole, I mean a line, right between two of the holes. Put the rubber piece in between the spokes, then get your thinner rubber piece, put it on top, then get your sprocket, put that on top, and then start loading it with all these nine bolts. You're gonna put a flat washer first, and then a split lock washer, and then a lock nut. The split lock washer is always closest to the lock nut. Okay, as you can see, I finished putting all the hardware on by hand. Now, what you need to do is make sure that the sprocket is centered exactly in the middle of the axle. That looks about perfect, so now I'm going to start tightening. Now remember, when you want to tighten, you always want to tighten the center bolt that's in between the side bolts on this half moon piece of metal. That way it evenly distributes the force. So you want to tighten this one, then this middle one, and then this middle one. And once you have those three tightened, you're going to move one forward one ahead and one ahead of the one you just tightened and then so on and so forth. That way you have evenly distributed force holding it down and not just a lot on one side of the sprocket and nothing on the other. Okay, I've just tightened the three center screws and now I'm going to recheck to make sure the sprocket is in the center. It looks like it went off a little bit, so I'm just going to correct it before I continue tightening all the bolts. Okay, that looks pretty good. We're going to continue tightening all the bolts now. <clears throat> okay, as you can see, we put the rear sprocket on and it's perfectly in the center of the axle. So now we're ready to put the coaster brake arm back on and reinstall the rear wheel. So 
So I installed the kosher brake arm and I noticed that we have a little play inside the axle, if you can see that. So the way we're going to fix that is right here. We loosen these two first screws and then this screw right here, tighten it until it's hand tight. And then you'll see that takes all the play out of the axle. And once that's accomplished, you can just retighten the retainer screw. Now you're ready to reinstall your rear wheel. This is the nut and bolt that holds the coaster brake arm. Usually the nut would go in from this way, but in this case, since we have this sprocket, we can make more room by putting the nut in from the back. Now you have more room for your chain and sprocket assembly. Okay, now we're gonna install the engine onto the frame. This specific frame has a very wide tube right here, which causes these two studs to hit because they're not wide enough. If you see right here, you can't put the engine on because the two studs are not wide enough. So that is the reason why this kit comes with this. This is basically an engine mount for a wider tube bike. Works just like that. So I'm gonna show you how to install this. So in order to remove these studs, you just use one of these lock pliers and turn the studs out. So we're going to use these short bolts to mount this onto the engine. These, from my experience, get loose, so I'm going to use some red Loctite on these bolts in, in particular. So you're going to put a split lock washer, a flat washer, the bracket, and red Loctite. Okay, so now we're ready to install the engine onto the bike. You're going to take this bracket, install it right here, just like that. And then use one flat washer, one split lock washer, and then one lock nut. For now, leave these bolts hand tight until we get this installed as well. For this we're going to use a flat washer and then two split lock washers. So first install the flat washers, then install two split lock washers, then we're going to install regular nuts, not lock nuts. Okay, so now that we're finished tightening these bolts, we're going to go back and start tightening these ones. Next, we're going to install the carburetor. It's very simple. Before I put it on, I want to just show you one thing about the carburetor. This screw right here is your idle screw. The more you tighten it, the higher your bike will idle. So now that you know that, I'll show you how to install it. Basically, you just put it here and slide it on. Very easy. Always make sure it's on all the way, or else you might have a vacuum leak. Okay, next we're going to install the coil. This is very simple as well. I like to put it right here, using these two bolts and this bracket. If you notice, the spark plug comes with this cap, but this is not designed to go with the cap, so in this case we're going to have to remove it very easily. Just loosen it off, and what you're left with 
is this threaded piece right here, which will plug right into this. Now I'm going to show you how to wire up the magneto to the coil. The coil has a black and blue wire, and the magneto also has a black and blue wire. So obviously the blue goes with the blue, and the black with the black. Positive to positive, and negative to negative. Next we're going to install the chrome exhaust. This is also very easy. Just take off these bolts on the head. Put a flat washer, then a split lock washer, and then a nut on each stud. And then with your 10 millimeter ratchet, just tighten it down. Okay, now we're gonna start installing the two liter gas tank. First thing you wanna do is install the pet cock, just like that. Try to make sure that this is always sticking outwards so it's easy to get to when you're riding. You're gonna use these two brackets and four lock nuts to hold the gas tank onto the frame. For the fuel line and filter, you're just gonna cut your fuel line in half. Make sure it's a clean cut. Install the line onto the filter. Now if you look on the filter, you'll see an arrow. This arrow is to show you the direction of flow of gas. So this arrow is showing that it's supposed to go that way. So this end is going to come from the gas tank, this end is going to go to the carburetor. Okay, the next step is to install the clutch and cable assembly. So first we're going to install the lever. You're going to want to cut off your handlebar grip. After you install the clutch lever, we're going to install the next the new handlebar grip. Now once you've installed the clutch lever and handlebar grip, you can start to install the clutch cable. This piece with the, with the little lead piece at the end is going to go into the grip right there. And then you slide it through this slit right here. I like to run the cable on the opposite side of the bike, just like that. Take off the retention piece right here. And then you're going to install this spring that's a heat shield. And that's going to protect this rubber insulation from burning against the engine. Slide the cable through the first holder, and just like that. Now all you need to do is reinstall the retainer. Next we're going to install the throttle cable and throttle assembly with kill switch. If you look inside there, you'll notice the little cylindrical piece of metal. This metal is designed to go inside a hole 
that you're supposed to drill into your handlebars on that side. So let me show you how to drill that hole. First you want to cut off your handlebar grit. The best way to measure where to drill the hole is to just put the throttle assembly on where it's going to be. And then what I like to do is just kind of go like this until you scratch the handlebar with that little cylindrical piece of metal. And now I can see a mark that I've made right there with the little piece over there. So this is how I know where to drill the hole. Okay, now that you have your hole in your handlebar, you're ready to install the throttle assembly. Before you do that, you're going to need to open it up all the way so you can install the cable. Just slide the cable through and then tighten this. Now slide that into there, just like that. Just tighten these screws enough so they hold it in place. When you put on the handlebar grip, make sure that it's locked into that hole that you just drilled. So mine is locked in, now I'm ready to tighten it. What I like to do to make it look clean is wrap the kill switch wires around the throttle cable. Now it's time to hook up the carburetor to the cable. So what you want to do is unscrew the top of the carburetor. You're going to take the top, put it on the cable. Then there's a spring, put that on the cable. And inside is this shaft. You have to feed the cable through this slit. As you can see, I have a lot of slack in my cable. So the way to fix that is to lift this, and that'll take the slack out. If you lift this all the way and you still have slack, then you can adjust this piece right here as well. And that'll take out any slack you might have. Okay, this is how you wire your kill switch. Out of the kill switch you have a yellow wire and a green wire. The yellow wire is positive, the green wire is negative. So you're going to hook the positive yellow wire up to the two blue lines which are also positive and then the negative green wire into the two black lines. Okay, now I'm gonna show you how to install your chain and chain tensioner. First thing you wanna do is install the chain. So engage your clutch and have this little uh, button to hold the clutch so it's constantly loose for you. And then with a flathead screwdriver, you wanna use this to turn the output sprocket to make sure that it's easy to turn. This one seems like it's pretty easy to turn. So what I'm going to do is feed the chain onto the sprocket and use the flathead screwdriver to turn it. So in this case, we don't need a chain breaker since our chain is exactly the right length, which is a rare occasion. It's really important the way you install the last piece of the master link. You always want the round part to always be fed into the engine first. So if the, if the wheel is going to go this way, you'd want this round part to lead. So we're going to install it 
like that. Okay, now that our chain is on, we're gonna install the chain tensioner. So you're gonna take off these bolts, put one bolt right there, and you wanna tighten this wheel so it's right before the point where it's gonna to touch the bolt. So as low as it can be before it touches the bolt. So right around there. Once your wheel is tight, you wanna put the two bolts through and slide the tensioner inside. Put your flat washer and then split lock washer and then the nut. Now you wanna pull the, ten the chain tensioner back as much as possible before you tighten it because you know your chain is gonna stretch out a lot in the first few miles of riding. Now before you do your final tighten, you wanna make sure that your chain tensioner is completely aligned so that the chain is getting fed onto the sprocket perfectly in the middle. So turn your wheel and check to see if it's perfectly aligned or not. Okay, mine looks pretty aligned, so I'm gonna tighten it down all the way now. Perfect. We're almost done. Now I'm just gonna install a few zip ties to hold all these cables to the frame so they don't get in the way. Lastly, we're going to install the chain cover. It's very easy. There's a little bolt right here. You just slide it on. Okay, everyone, as you can see, the bike has been completed. Make sure you tighten all the bolts before you start riding. Also, I recommend installing front and rear brakes on the bike for your own safety. I'll see you at the races. Enjoy the ride.